Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today we are here for another pens for the month. Today this video is about the pens for July 2022. It is very very late because we are in mid-August and I didn't have the time to record it before. As I told you already, this is being... the, the last uh, times have been very crazy for me, so I am struggling a little bit to keep the channel going, but I want to, so let's try to hold these and I hope after October things will return to kind of a normal rhythm. However, I still want to record this video because this is also important for me to know which pens have ink at, at each time and so I'm recording it all however it is or though it is very late now. So let's start and I will show you the pens that I have with ink. Again, because the times have been a little bit crazy, there is very hot weather here. Today it's not that bad, but it has been very hot. We had two heat waves um, this summer already. So some pens, I'm not using all the pens very frequently, some pens may have maybe a little bit dry by now, so you'll see the real life. Sometimes we pick up a pen and it's dried, so it may happen now. We'll never know. We'll have to see to know. So let's start. My first pen is a pen that already comes from some other months before. It is the William Shakur Titan Pocket in these yellow transparent resin. It is a pocket pen that becomes quite big when posted. And so this is the, let me see if, if I can get the focus right, because this new cell phone struggles a little bit with this. So this is the William, yes this one is writing, Shakur Titan Pocket with a fine titanium nib. This is a, an interesting part. This pen is a piston filler. You see here this is the reservoir and you have a very big number 8 titanium nib which is very very nice and flexible. And inside it has, you can see the plus the downstroke is quite thick. Let me do it again, like this. You see it is very, very flexible. This is the Mont Blanc Racing Green. One, let me just do some, something like this, just for you to see the color of the ink. One of my favorite inks, a very dark, muddy green. And this is really, really an interesting pen. And William Shakur is always surprising us with new and different stuff. The next pen I have here to show you is a pen that you already know, also here in the channel, and it is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. It is an, the, this is the Bronze Age, and this is the oversized model, which has this very interesting capping mechanism. And let's write with it. This is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. Um, let me check my okay, bronze H oversize with a fine palladium nib. Will you focus this? You can see two-tone palladium nib, a number six nib. And it has inside an ink that I really enjoy, which is Sailor Gentle Sutton. And it is a, an ink that has a very interesting smell. I really like the smell of this ink. It's not a scented ink, but it has a smell due to the, the components of the ink and 
it really reminds me the smell of the vintage Parker Queen ink, so I really like it. So this is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. The next pen, also with a V, so we are talking about a pen from the United Kingdom, another from Italy, the next one is also from Italy, also, also a Visconti, and this is the Visconti Breeze with this beautiful lime color. So, this is the Visconti Breeze with a very feedbacky uh, nib, but I really like it. I think it's good, but feedbacky with a fine steel nib, which is quite small. It's a number five nib. And the pen is not that small, so I think the nib could be bigger. And always these focusing troubles. Okay, you can see it now. Focus. Okay, you can see it there. It has a fine steel nib, it is a very interesting pen with a magnetic cap and inside it has an ink that matches very well the color of the pen and it is, let me uh, lock the exposure otherwise it will be always going back and forth uh, it has J. Herbin Ver which is a very nice bright green, almost a neon green, and I really enjoy this the color of this ink. Sorry, I'm having lots of focusing trouble today. Next pen is a pen from India. This is a pen that a viewer of the channel sent to me. This is a Vazir Jaune, Jaune from yellow. It has the, the symbol, which is the, the queen from the chess set. And it is a big yellow pen and, you know, I like yellow pens. So this is the Vazir Jaune. She sent me the pen um, with a fine and an extra fine nib. This, it, it has the fine nib now and it is a steel nib as you can see number six also fine there it says Vazir and it has again the the chess queen there engraved and it has inside the ink is Sailor Studio four three seven. This see, this was just a very small sample that I had. It all went. It is a very interesting uh, kind of Bordeaux color. It went well into the. It it went all the ink sample inside the pen. So less it is a little bottle less that i have in my collection now this by the way let me tell you because i didn't i di i told you only about the first one this one is a the william shakur is a piston filler this is a vacuum filler the breeze cartridge converter the vazir john cartridge converter pen and from india we go to italy uh, to a brand that I really, really like. This is Santini and this is the Santini Libre. This is a pen that I really enjoy and it is a piston filler. So this is the Santini Libre in olive, that's the name of this color, with a fine gold nib. Let me put here. So, so far we have um, Titanium, Palladium, Steel and Gold nibs and that's it. I don't have any more materials for nibs. You can see here, this is Santini 
a kind of a number six nib made by Santini themselves. This is a great nib. And this one has inside an ink that has a very good flow, which is the KWZ Oscar, uh, an exclusive edition for the Dutch store Fontoplomo. Very dark green and with a very nice scent of vanilla, I think. Gorgeous pen. The next pen is one of my favorite pens ever and one of the most expensive pens I have. And it is from Japan and it is the Sailor King of Pen. I really love this pen. It is a cartridge converter. So this is the Sailor King of Pen. It has a very characteristic feedback. The color is dark champagne. It has a medium gold nib and you can see it is very flexible. I will do it again on the... Now I overdid it. You can see. Uh, inside it has again my very favorite Mont Blanc Racing Green. This is a wonderful pen. I really enjoy it and I really like the combo of the pen and ink. Gorgeous pen. The next one is a very small pilot pen that I have not been using at all, but it doesn't try. At least it didn't. Let's see how, how, how it is working now. This is the pilot working perfectly. Petit one. It has, it is in gray color. It has a fine steel nib. The nib is like this. A very simple nib without breather hole, but it has the, the place marked for the breather hole. Very, very simple pen, very small, all plastic, posts very well and it takes cartridges, the short, a uh, small version of the pilot cartridges. And so it has inside some pilot blue that came with the pen, blue cartridge. This is an, a nice one. It is an interesting, but I've not been using it that much because I have other pens that I prefer and I'm not having the time that I would love to have for writing. The next pen is also from Japan, also Pilot and also a cartridge pen. And it is the cartridge or converter. This is a Pilot made in Japan and the number is the Costume 743. This is a very interesting pen. I really like it. It's the same as the 823, but cartridge converter instead of vacuum filler. It has gold nib and it is a very nice one. So this is the Pilot Costume 743 with a fine gold nib and inside it has another of my favorite inks, Parker Quink Black. And the ink flow is great, the pen is great, it has a little bit feedback, which is different from the feedback of the Sailor, for example, and it's really a nice pen. It has a very classic design. It doesn't stand out that much. It has that cigar shape, but it's a really nice pen. It is quite long. I like it. The next pen is not from Japan. It is from Germany and it is the Pelican M200. So this is the Pelican M200. The color is golden beryl. This pen is here as a loan from Apple Boom. The pen has a lot of glitter, but the ink also has glitter. And here you can see the nib. But it, it works quite well with, a, with a, an ink so heavily saturated with glitter. 
So this is the M200 golden barrel with a medium steel nib and ink is Pelican Edelstein golden barrel. So it is the ink that was made to match the pen. And it is a very nice, interesting gold color ink. It's not that usable in many circumstances, but it is usable in regarding how readable it is. I think it's perfectly readable. You can see it there. And now from Germany and Pelican, we go to a worldwide brand, which is Parker. And the first one is the Parker Vector XL, which is kind of a newer model of the Vector. So this is the Parker Vector XL in black with a fine steel nib, very simple nib, with this very simple and mm, kind of ugly design, but the pen performs really nicely. And inside it has a cartridge of Parker Quink Permanent Blue. Very, very good pen. It works very well. So if you are in need of a pen urgently and you are in the street, you can go into a store and buy one of these. It's not that expensive. And you have a pen, some cartridges and a very good writer immediately. By the way, this is a cartridge converter pen and the previous Pelican was a piston filler. And now we'll go to another Parker that my grandmother gave to me one day. It has steel nib, gold color, but has steel nib, semi-hooded nib. It's a very typical Parker pen, I would say. A more modern kind of it. So this is the Parker inflection in the flighter color in flighter color scheme it has a fine steel nib and inside it has parker quink green and i really like this pen i wrote a lot with it some time before and now I've been using these, these and another semi-hooded pen that I will show the last pen of the group. Uh, I've been using both for, I'm now working on a small script kind of a, for a short, short movie, a short film. And I'm just writing the script and I'm using a black and green pen just to organize myself and I'm I'm enjoying using this pen. The next pen is from China and it is the Moonman M Moonman sorry Moonman A1 in green. You can see there Moonman engraved. This is still Moonman, not a Majon pen yet. It has been made before. It is a really and very close inspiration of uh, on the pilot couplets. Even the parts are interchangeable. It is a very interesting pen. So you just use it like this. It is a retractable pen. So this is the Moonman A1 in green with an extra fine nib. And inside it has Parker Quink black and the pen writes really well it doesn't dry it works we may always say this oh but that's kind of a chinese pen and not that nice but actually this is really really nice it's very nice copy of the pilot and much less expensive i wouldn't say this would replace the pilot but it is a very good way to if you want just to try if you can work well with the, the grip of the Pilot Capless and to have the 
clip between your fingers this pen is really a nice choice to try it and now still on letter M we'll go from China to Germany and we have this Montblanc 149 that went for restoration and it's here working again so this is the Montblanc 149 I forgot to write Meisterstück let me write there Meisterstück it has a I would say architect sorry architect gold nib two-tone number nine nib so very big nib and inside it has sailor studio 160 and this pen works really well with this ink but the way the nib is ground for this architect style it makes it too broad for my normal handwriting and write normal stuff it's only to write big notes if i want to make them really big now we'll go into lamy germany letter l this is an interesting pen very simple nothing that special but kind of nice and this is the lamy logo in brushed steel I don't think it's that brushed but I understand what they mean it has this regular Lamy nib that is common on Lamy Safari for example so it has a medium steel nib and ink inside is Lamy blue and I would say this is a very reliable pen it's handy it's uh, slim but not extra slim but you may find it slippery if you are one of those persons that one of those people that find the steel section slippery this may be slippery although it has that kind of texture at least i see that potential i don't usually find pens to be slippery even if they are made of metal but some of you have that opinion the next pen will be also a Lamy and it is this older kind of, one, kind of one of the first I would say Lamy 2000 it still has the L there it doesn't move the clip if you press there it doesn't have Germany engraved and on the clip it has the, the size of the nib here engraved on the bar on the section with the M it has a semi-hooded gold nib and the, in this old pen it is an 18 karat gold nib instead of the regular from nowadays 14 karat gold nib so this is the Lamy oops Lamy 2000 in let's call it Macrolon so this is the black material with a medium nib now let me just show it to you if I open this like this with no pressure medium nib and I'll close it with pressure and you can see line variation which is interesting for a semi hooded nib pen and inside it has some unknown blue ink this pen writes really well maybe a little bit thick for my preference but i was very lucky to find this pen in used but in very nice condition actually it went as a lot of pens uh, pen pencil and ballpoint pen and now from germany lamy uh, piston filler pen we jump to caveco in germany for cartridge converter pens this is the Kavec sterling sport an amazing pen made of sterling silver that gets all the fingerprints and all the little scratches and scuffs and still 
not visible patina. So this is the Caveco Sterling Sport. And yes, this one is the most expensive pen I have in my collection. And I have to thank Caveco for sending me such a pen. And inside it has Caveco Caramel Brown. It writes really well and let me show you. It has some feedback and it is a Caveco number no. 5 gold nib but not in gold color. The next pen is another Caveco. This is the chocolate edition from Fonto Plumo. Another interesting edition for crazy people like me that collect them all. So this is the Caveco Sport Chocolate with, uh, let me write it all, GT4 Fonto Plumo with a fine steel nib, gold plated steel nib and KWZ Oscar ink again. So I'm not using that many inks and some inks are repeated during this video. So nice pocket pen, I like it as you know. And the next one is another Caveco pen and it is the special edition for cult pens, a purple one. And this one is called Caveco Regal purple for Caveco Sport Regal, uh, Regal purple for cult pens with a fine steel nib it's like the nib on the on the other two but this is still in steel color and the ink it has inside is Caveco summer purple And it is a nice purple ink. And we'll go now for another model from Caveco, which is the Caveco Perkeo school pen, bigger size, triangular grip, push fit cap. So this is the Caveco Perkeo all clear with a fine steel nib let me try to show you there and the ink it has inside is Caveco Palm Green this pen has some feedback it has a very nice flow it is a very nice pen it takes cartridge or, con or converter but it is a bigger one than the Cavex Sport so it may take full size international cartridge or converters. From Cavex Perque we'll go to Cavex Lilliput, a very small steel pen with a bronze clip. This one was sent to me by Cavex for review. And let me screw the cap there because the pen is really really small cartridge pen again the same kind of nib made of steel so this is the Caveco Lilliput I think this is an M not sure no it is a F Lilliput in steel with a fine steel nib and inside it has Caveco Royal Blue which is the ink cartridge that comes inside every Caveco pen that you buy. We still have more two Caveco to go and it, they are the recent editions. This one is the Caveco collection there you can see 
mellow blue, which is a very nice blue color. Let me write with it. This is the Caveco collection. Mellow blue with a fine steel nib and inside it has Caveco Royal Blue. It's not a match between the ink and the pen and I don't really try to do that that often but I didn't try in this time because I didn't want to use a very light ink inside. The next one is the other Caveco collection that was released just a few days ago, yesterday, and it is the Caveco collection with gold trim made of aluminium iguana blue. A nice one with a steel nib there, but gold plated. So, this is the Caveco collection iguana blue with a fine steel nib and inside, in this case I tried really to match the pen and ink and I think I did it, it has inside Leonardo Officina Italiana Smeraldo blue. It is a very, very beautiful kind of very bright teal color. And so we reach the end of Caveco pens. The next one is from Germ from sorry, from China, and it is inspired in a German pen, the Mont Blanc 149, and this is the Jinhao X159. It is a new model of pen uh, related with Jinhao 159, but it's not the same pen. This is made of plastic, not metal. So this is the Jinhao X159 in black. It is so far only available in black, maybe, and I hope there will be more colors, maybe a yellow one. It has a fine steel nib, but this nib is a very big nib. It is number eight nib made of steel and it works really well. Inside it has, guess what, Mont Blanc Racing Green. And we are now, the, and this pen writes really well, I'm really happy with this. It is the same size, same kind of feel as the Mont Blanc 149, but it is more, it is easier to, to use because of the nib the other one has which is not my favorite. We are almost reaching the end of the, the video and this was pen number 23 out of 28. Last month we have we have 24 pens. I tried to reduce the number of pens but I actually increased this month. This pen, and you'll say you already showed it, it was the Lamy 2000, but it's not. It is a Jinhao 80 which reminds us of, like, on the outside, the it reminds of the Lamy 2000 and when you open it, it reminds us of the Lamy Studio. That's, that's what I think about this pen when I look at it, but it works really nice and it's, it's a very good pen. It is the Jin Hao 80 in black. So you have this exposed nib, kind of the Lamy Safari nib, instead of the Smihudi nib that you find on the Lamy 2000. It has a fine steel nib and inside it has again that ink. Leonardo Officina Italiana Smeraldo Blue. Then this is again a very good ink pen combo because they work well together and the ink makes lots of contrast to a black pen. We'll need to flip the page and we'll go to the next pen.
And the next pen is a pen from Ireland, a pen that I enjoy but I've not been using. I'm not sure if it still has ink or if it is dry. It is the Gravitas. So this one comes from Ireland. Yes, it writes. This is the Gravitas. Stainless steel. And it is the Skull edition. You'll find in this engraving, you'll find skulls. And I really like skulls on pens. It has a number six medium steel nib, a yovo, generic nib, medium, very smooth. And it has another favorite ink, Montblanc William Shakespeare. It is a very nice burgundy, not really burgundy, it's more like a very dark red ink, a velvet red, and it's actually called velvet red. It's called William Shakespeare Velvet Red. Now we have another pen from the same brand the, with the same engraving, Skulls. But this one has lots of patina because it's not made of stainless steel, but it's made of copper. And this is the Gravitas Pocket Copper Skulls. And I'm still wishing that Ben Walsh, that creates these pens, makes uh, a section of copper also. I would love to have an all copper pen. It has a fine steel nib, a Yovo fine steel nib, which is the same as the previous one. And I said fine, and the other one is medium. And inside it has, it looks like the same ink, but it's not. This one is Diamine Oxblood. Okay, the inks may not be exactly the same in all their properties and so on, but for these kind of medium or fine nibs, the inks look the same. So if you don't have the Montblanc William Shakespeare that it's no longer made, you can just go for the Diamine Oxblood, which will provide you the same overall writing experience. And now just two pens to go. The next one is also made of copper, but this one is from the United States, although it has an Italian inspiration. A very nice, heavy pen. And this one is the Enso Italia in copper. Big pen, heavy. It has a fine steel bock nib, which I enjoy. It didn't work that well when I got it, but I just had to work with it just a little bit. And it has inside Parker Quink Black. One of the reasons I have too many pens with ink is that I want to make some reviews and I'm not having the time to do them. And so they will keep they keep being inked forever and I'm just struggling with this. And now let's go to the final pen of today. And it is this Yellow Beauty, the Aurora Duo Cart with the Semi Hoodie Nib. This is the other one with which I'm working on my very short, small short movie script. So this is the Aurora Duo Cart in yellow with a medium steel nib. It's not available in any other nibs, so only steel and only medium, but it's really a very good choice. And it has Parker Quink Black. And why? Because I like the ink. It reminds me lots of stuff. It smells good and I still have 
some stock of it. So I really like this ink. I like all these. And I just hope you enjoyed this video. I think this was a, a nice one. I'm sorry that I may sound a little tired and I am. I'm getting very sleepy now. And anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you'll be back for more videos like this. And now I just have to thank you all for watching. You have links for reviews and stores to get the pens that I showed you here. And I just hope you come back and you'll meet again for next video. So see you then. Bye.